On today's episode, East Palestine derailment. It's in the bearings. There's a reason why ancient historians hailed the invention of the wheel. The mobility offered by the wheel let humanity develop global cities and societies and to trade goods to create the global economy. For most of human history, it was limited to the speed that oxen or horses could walk, but the invention of the steam engine and low-cost steel meant that railways could increase those transport speeds by an order of magnitude. And while people like Watt and Newcomen and Stevenson are credited with the development of railway technology, the simple fact is making it all work were anti-friction bearings. The original form of the anti-friction bearing, the ball bearing, was patented by Philip Vaughan in 1794, conveniently just in time for the steam engine that kicked off the Industrial Revolution. And as every mechanical engineer knows, then and now, for ball and roller bearings to survive, a few basic factors must be met. They must carry no more than design loads, exclude dirt and debris, be lubricated, and critically, be kept at temperatures low enough to preserve rolling element and race metallurgy. Now, heat has always been the enemy, and in the recent Norfolk Southern East Palestine train derailment, the National Transportation Safety Board has issued a preliminary report that states that Norfolk Southern train 32N, consisting of 149 cars and three locomotives, suffered a serious bearing overheating condition in the 32nd car, leading to the derailment of 38 cars, including 11 tank cars carrying toxic vinyl chloride. The measurement of heat rise in bearings is a standard industrial MRO practice and is common for bearing housings, pillow blocks, and today even bearing races themselves may contain sensors that relay data to maintenance software. But for railroad rolling stock, the heat buildup only occurs when the trains are in motion and the number of bearings involved is large. With four axles and two bogies on each rail car, the Norfolk Southern train was hauling 596 axles with a heat-induced failure at any one representing a derailment risk. Since the bearings can't be inspected by crews while the train moves, automated thermography is used on the rail bed to scan trains passing overhead and report hot bearing conditions, a technology railroads call wayside defect detectors or hot bearing detectors. The systems send audible real-time warning alerts to train crews when bearing temperatures reach preset thresholds. Norfolk Southern safety standards required train crews to stop and inspect bearings between 170 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit and also to stop and inspect where the difference between bearings in the same axle were greater than or equal to 215 degrees Fahrenheit. At temperatures greater than 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the railroad requires train crews to uncouple and set out the defective rail car. The suspect car on train 32N passed three HBDs over a 30-mile stretch near East Palestine, with bearing temperatures on the 23rd car showing 38 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient, then 103 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient, followed by 253 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient. The alarm sounded and the crew stopped to the train, but too late to prevent the derailment. According to the preliminary report, the train crew operated per standard Norfolk Southern procedures and the train was running at 47 miles per hour, less than the maximum authorized speed of 50 miles per hour. At this stage of the investigation, bearing detection systems operated properly. The train crew were warned in a timely manner and took the correct measures in stopping the train. So how can a derailment like this be prevented in the future? If temperature is the sole criterion for bearing failure prediction, there are very few possibilities to improve the system. More data points through a closer spacing of detectors, which at the incident site were 10 and 20 miles apart, could give enough data points for a smart system to project time or distance to critical bearing overheat, and then flag the crew to stop the train sooner. Or Norfolk Southern procedures could be amended to force the crew to stop the train at lower temperature thresholds and inspect for damage. A long-term solution might involve sensor-equipped bearings and detection systems that include other data, like sound and vibration, to predict bearing failure. Now, all these solutions would increase operating costs and would have to be weighed against other safety improvements, which might be more cost-effective and result in greater overall rail safety with the occasional hot bearing caused derailment. The U.S. freight rail network runs on 140,000 miles of track, and railroads reinvest a very high percentage of revenues, 19%, on their systems. Was the Norfolk Southern East Palestine derailment an outlier or a sign of an industry-wide safety issue? Well, according to the Association of American Railroads, the mainline accident rate for Class 1 railroads like Norfolk Southern is at an all-time low and is down 49% since the year 2000. Measured by carload, the hazardous materials accident rate is down 70% since 2000 and is currently the lowest rate ever recorded based on preliminary Bureau of Explosives data. The statistics suggest that freight rail in America is generally safe, but it's widely expected that this accident will spur regulatory changes. 
This may be a golden opportunity for application of embedded, low-power and connected Internet of Things sensors to monitor safety-critical components like bearings in real time. We'll be watching for engineering developments. Well, that's it for this week's episode. If you like the show, consider joining engineering.com to get personalized story recommendations, follow topics you care about, and participate with the global engineering community. Thanks for watching.